Hello everybody and I hope you're having a fantastic day and in this video I'm going to be talking about the treasure spawn that just came out for Fickle Scholar Monetary Hey DJ Kali but another one Anyways, moving on from there, let's get to the monster, let's get to the treasure spawn, let's wrap this video up Okay, so target all allies, it's going to heal for an ability power of 80, that's as strong as a divinity without any enhancements the ability power is going to be boosted by 10 for each increase in skill level, so it's actually going to get boosted even more, so it's going to do a significant heal, like a, a crazy heal. Anyways, moving on from there, we got removes debuffs, I mean removes buffs from all enemies, pretty cool. And then this one is going to apply decay, it's a continuous buff renew that renews the effect, reduces all enemy stats by 20% for 60 seconds for every 10 seconds. For 60 seconds, I mean they already said it right there for 60 seconds twice, but pretty much what it's doing for every 10 seconds for a total of 60 seconds, so that means it's going to happen 6 times, is it's going to reduce the stats of all enemies by 20%. It's also going to remove attack ability accuracy increasing effects, it's going to add an attack ability accuracy effect for all allies, it's going to fill the unison gouge by 20, fill going to increase the unison gouge gains by 2, for 50 seconds, it's gonna apply a blessing to yourself, and then it's gonna apply a dazzling collapse, reduce the attack ability accuracy by 20% to the enemy field for 60 seconds. This right here, player versus enemy monster, not not like Coliseum or dual room orientated, not guild battle orientated. Though I do wonder how decay would work in guild battles when you're hitting at a crystal assault because this is something that doesn't just happen once. This happens over time. So I wonder if it would transfer from uh, like the team you're fighting, right? The DK buff would transfer to them, from them to the crystal. I, I wonder if that would happen when you're using the DK buff. I'm curious. It's more of curiosity rather than to see if it's good or not. Honestly, if you got mages. Quite useless buff. I'm 100% I'm honest with you with this one. Quite useless buff. And I, I literally don't over exaggerate that or anything. It's quite a useless buff for guild battle. If that's the case. Even if that isn't the case. Usually all you really need is like a Michaela or a Magnus over here. And you're good to go. You don't need a like a defensive debuff. Though you can get it through regular effects. Especially if you got again mages on your team then it should be quite easy to get that alone and you really don't even need that to be fairly honest to really pop off and do a lots of damage anyways moving on from there that's really all i gotta say about the monster except if you want her for perhaps the looks or because she does look pretty cool i'm not gonna lie um or the prestige that she has to offer in the new event they from cradle to vengeance you can get that, but that's, that's literally only it's the only purpose in even getting her in the first place. So, yeah, <laughs> and she has abilities besides the game that the only thing that's special about her is the continuous buff. Like you got monsters that can just treat up like reduce all stats by. You still got Romeo. Romeo's a 33 cost. Reduce all stats by 60%. Increase all stats of all enemies by 60%. Sure, it's gonna be for a little less longer. But you pretty much get the effect that you need to really pop off and do crazy amounts. You see gauge gains is around, stuff like that. This monster is nothing special. You get some of these abilities off our 33s, other 34s, other 35s, and 36s, and I had 37s as well. So this monster is not a needed monster. This isn't a meta. This isn't a must have. Not even close. So that's literally it for. Moritary, I think that's the name. Hope I spelled it right. Anyways, let's move on from there. Again, no raid up within the treasure spawn, so it's gonna be one of those spawns where you gotta get through the jackpot, which is unlikely, and or you have to get through metal exchange. Double chance will activate. It activates every after first time half off and after every jackpot you get, which allows you to choose two chests instead of one that you regularly get to choose. 50 to 200 bells each time you spawn, six chests, and it's one of those ones where you get the summoning scroll, so cool that it actually offers monsters in here. And then the summoning scroll, what the summoning scroll allows you to do is it allows you to choose the stats of the monster. So if you get a jackpot, you're guaranteed, and yes, they still haven't changed this list for some odd reason. 33 cost or higher monsters. 
the only cool thing about it, the only thing that really makes it exclusive is the fact that, first of all, it's got a monster of its own. Yes, it will be really hard to get from the jackpot, like I said again, but the fact that you're able to choose any of these monsters at the stats you oh so desire is a very, very good thing in the first place. Drop a the Awakening Orbs. You got 1,400 charging medals in total from the chest. You got select weapon and select defense gear guaranteed as well, so that's not bad also. I like the selection they have in this one. It's a lot better of what they're doing personally. I wish the medals were a bit higher, like maybe 800 or 900 in the side chest, but other than that, I personally wouldn't have any complaints, to be fairly honest. Besides the low cost guaranteed again, we got 34 cost weapons that are the lowest and 35 cost armors. Not bad whatsoever. A lot of this stuff though has like uh, abilities, like these right here have abilities that are more useful towards guild battles. And then these, oh well these also, and then these are elemental right here, these are just kind of like gear score right here. This is also kind of like gear score, so yeah. Let's get to the metal exchange and see what they got in there. This is the first time I actually checking the spawns, sometimes I actually check these spawns before I even get into them. I, I did not see Lyriel, so that's very interesting. I did not see Horus or Young Soul, TYR, and Otohime being non stat wise oh she's just straight up magic attack and magic defense regardless so very very interesting they have these in here 6k to actually obtain these 8k to obtain teach and 10k to obtain monomotary so it's going to be as hard as it usually is to obtain these i wouldn't go for any of this the uh, old stuff except maybe for like the lance i know the lance has a pretty good ability i mean being granted to be fairly honest there are other abilities for the Lance, like from Lances, for the Lancer out there, that are out there, especially considering this one right here is a better break one than the one I was just showing you. But if you need something that's quick and to the point, that can definitely do that. But I, I just want to warn you, there's better ones out there. I wouldn't go for these, except for maybe the Reflection Reduction, the, the um, effect that it has for that. The fact that these, like these right here, are great against fire element. They got the bulwark and the lance banner, so those are excellent against uh, fire elements. Other than that, other for element or the reflection reduction or to replace the regular attack, I wouldn't go for these. These are, I wouldn't say completely outdated, but compared to, they're gonna have 37 cost out stuff out again. 37 cost weapons, that is. 38 cost armors and monsters. I would recommend saving up for those, or if you're free to play, I would recommend saving up for a spawn that's actually going to help you in the long run. I mean, this can help you. If you're low on monsters, getting a summoning scroll can help you, but you want to be very cautious doing the spawn. The spawn is going to drain your gems dry if you are free to play, and I do not kid you. And it may not even be worth it. It's only like 133 cost monster that you could do the special spawn for when they come back out with it and obtain for 30 gems yes you won't be getting the stats that you want guaranteed but it will be significantly more cheaper than doing this spawn because you can literally do the spawn like five times five times 30 i think it's 150 but you can minus that by 15 i think that's like 135 gems i might be wrong you can literally use 135 gems and just get 133 costs if you're completely unlucky and need to get all chests to get the jackpot and yes, this is with double chance too. It could take up to 135 gems. You could do it on your 15 gems. You could possibly get on your 15 gems. But it can take up to 135 gems to get. So be cautious if you are free to play and you are doing this. I know the whole stat choose thing sounds sweet. But you really want to be cautious. And I do not kid you when I say that. And that's like the prime example of why and stuff like that. So that's all I got to say about this one. This one's an easy pass for me. I don't know about you guys and gals out there. This ain't nothing significant, so I won't really all too much worry about it. But yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helped out. This is the Azeroth, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.